PoisonIvyRemoval.com This is a picture that speaks for itself. Poison ivy has been growing extensively for many, many years in this location. It comes in all different sizes, shapes, and colorations. It comes in pink and green. It comes in green and pink. It comes in red. <clears throat> it comes in light green. It comes in dark green. It always bears the testament of three leaves. It grows short. It grows tall. It grows in the grass. It grows in the brush. It grows in bushes. It grows in English ivy. This is what you call the mother load of poison ivy. All of this is poison ivy. For all you poison ivy Africandos out there, this is like the ultimate trip in Itchville. I mean, seriously, this can do a lot of serious damage, creating massive amounts of rash and discomfort if someone would ever first walk through this, unsuspecting that this is even poison ivy, because a lot of people don't recognize nor realize that poison ivy comes in all the different shapes, colors, heights. It even has a chameleon-like ability to take on the characteristic background color of wherever it chooses to grow. So it blends in with the surrounding environment to make itself appear as inconspicuous. So it's got a chameleon capability unlike most other plants. I mean, you can see here, I'm going to zoom in. Just study that picture. Look at the little tinges of pink and I'm red on the ends. And then if you come over here, you look at these plants, they have reddish tint on the ends and they're not poison ivy. How about that? This poison ivy, that's not poison ivy, but still pink. The shininess is the reflection of the <clears throat> cuticle or the epidermal layer that's ridden with urushi oil chemical that's responsible for causing discomfort and rash. The Ruchiol chemical bonds to the skin it was usually within 10 to 15 minutes. So if you first make contact with poison ivy, the one thing you want to do is get to cold running water as quickly as possible. If you have soap, all the better. Use lots of soap to rinse and wash vigorously to get the oil off of your skin. All of this is poison ivy. <clears throat> I couldn't grow a better crop if I tried. Truly an amazing plant. Survival characteristics, it grows in the harshest and most extreme environments that are known to mankind. It will not grow in freezing cold temperatures, but it will grow in shade, it will grow in sun, it will grow in hot, it will grow in dry, it will grow in, in seaside environments where salt water intrusion daily comes in with the ebb and flow of the tide.
It'll grow in wind. It'll grow on the tops of mountains. It'll grow on trees. It's spread, the seeds are spread by wind, rain, and wildlife. <clears throat> If it wasn't for the birds and the squirrels and chipmunks that eat these seeds that are produced yearly, much of poison ivy as we know it today would not ever exist. It's an opportunistic plant. It likes to settle into areas that were recently disturbed. So the soil, soil profile has been uprooted. And then it takes over as a, left to its own devices, it takes over as a, as a dominant species. In the background over here, we have some milkweed, which is great for butterfly attraction, soon to bloom. The white flower behind is wild tea rose. The leaves are, are very tiny. That's how tiny they are, right there. Walk bare through, barefoot through that and you'll know about it in a couple of days, I can assure you. Here's poison ivy. That's teeny tiny. That's enough to cause you an itch from hell. And then of course we have the larger size leaves over here. Poison ivy. <clears throat> Truly an amazing invention decisively what it's good for. It's good for feeding wildlife, it's good for stabilizing st steep embankments, holds erosion in check with its root structure. The resin that comes from the leaves, which is what gives you the rash, it's also in the lacquer family, so when it hits the air, the sap turns jet black as it oxidizes. Poison ivy. You'll be scratching like a hound the moment you miss around with poison ivy. Who shall make you itch? The song by the coasters, Poison Ivy, circa 1950. This is one heck of a lot of poison ivy. And by the way, you never, never, never want to burn poison ivy. Because if you do and you breathe in the fumes, you're sure to get the rash inside your lungs, and more than likely, you will die as a result. PoisonIvyRemoval.com. We're just itching for your business. Have a great day.